Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the virtual neighborhood of Life is the Sacred Journey. Um, my name is Michelle Pope, and uh, you have come into the virtual living room, the upper room of Life is a Sacred Journey. And it is my great honor this morning to have my sister friend, Carolyn Brent, with me. She, uh, we have been friends for over a decade. Um, and she'll talk a little bit more about how we met. You guys have heard the story, but it's the cutest story. And, um, and over that time, we both have, uh, you know, revealed and unveiled uh, how we, we got to the place where we are in our lives today. And in that unveiling, we realized that we both have experienced so much pain, so much grief, betrayal, all of the things that break your heart and make you feel like, wow, what did I do to deserve this? But we also have come out of it with hope, with joy, with gratitude, and, and with a, a sense of divine calling, basically, to be the change we want to see um, on this planet and not only within ourselves, but on the planet. So we want to be demonstrations of that. And so um, Carolyn has written many, many books. You, you know, she's been on the, the podcast, uh, the vlog or whatever they call these things, actually. I don't even know, really. Um, but she's been with us before. And, and um, since then, she received her uh, PhD, honorary PhD degree uh, for her incredible books and being in the Library of Congress and all of these things that she has done. But there's, you know, when you see us come out, like I got my pretty shirt on and my makeup and I'm looking all happy and, and looking like I, I'm all self-actualized, know that it takes a lot to get there. Know that it takes <clears throat> really truly learning who you are and loving yourself. And it takes a lot of hurdles and a lot of pain to get there. So I want to introduce... Carolyn Brent, who is amazing, uh, and and really just say thank you, Carolyn, uh, for joining us here at Life is a Sacred Journey. My camera is, okay, here we go. Um, here at Life is a Sacred Journey, you know how I feel about you. Uh, but, you know, I want to start by really talking about this thing called, uh, that we speak about a lot, where we say, you know, we've got to get into healing, we've got to, we've got to heal ourselves. And, and, you know, all of these words that really mean healing trauma, healing grief, healing pain. And in the recent days, as you and I talked before we went online, all of this, these guns and shootings and people, as I say, crashing into each other with their own pain and grief, where does healing, and you can even share a story of, of your own healing, but, but how do we get to healing when we're crashing and, and, and living such a hopeless existence um, and it's happening around us all the time? How do we heal? So I'm asking you. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. <laughs> thank you. Well, Michelle, first of all, thank you. And I'm honored, to be, as you know. And the one thing that I want to share with people, and I think this will resonate with them. Mm -hmm. Imagine, I want people to imagine how they would feel, because I'm going to talk about something tragic that happened to me, and I had to heal from it and have hope and become an advocate. Imagine being a caregiver for 12 years, a sole caregiver for the, your superhero. In my case, it was my dad. I was the only one out of eight adult children, because I didn't have children, they said, oh, Carolyn, you do it, you do it, you and dad are close, you take care of them. And I did that, and I felt that I did a fabulous job, uh, just having a pharmaceutical background and loving my dad, and, and literally putting my dad before me, that's what I did. And as a result, when my dad had a sudden uh, unexpected emergency, which is hy uh, hydrocyphalus, and he also was bleeding on the brain. I rushed him to the trauma center in Walnut Creek, 
uh, called John, I guess, John Near Hospital. Okay, yes. Yeah. After I checked my dad in, I never saw him again. Not because he died, because a family member decided, oh, we want to take over. So they told the hospital and, and press charges for me with elder abuse, which, of course, that was not true. Yeah. Then come the final blow after I've gone through three different ju jurisdiction courthouse, you know, to protect myself from elder abuse. And we go before the judge and I think I get to see my daddy today. And then I get another restraining order in a different county and I never saw my dad. Imagine how I felt when I got a phone call two weeks later from a distant relative and said, oh, your dad was buried. So imagine, I never knew he died. Yeah. No one to this day, this is 15 years later, never even said uh, he was buried at XYZ Cemetery to this day. So I share that story because I know what excruciating pain feels like. Mm -hmm. I felt like my world, it came crashing down because I said, how can anybody get through trauma and pain like this? Yeah. And then I checked myself, I checked myself into the hospital in Tracy, California. I wow. thought I was having a heart attack. And uh, I laid there in bed, super depressed. And then the doctor came after they did EKGs and everything on me. I just knew, dear God, take me home today. I don't want to deal with this pain anymore. Take me home. And the doctor looked at me and said, sorry, the, the doctor looked at me and said, Miss Brett, you are having a panic attack. And I thought, well, what is a panic attack? And he yeah. told me all the stress I was going through. Yeah. And then he walked out of uh, the, the patient room. I still laid there depressed, hopeless, thinking I have no hope. And how could I heal from a, a, a heart that was traumatized like my heart was? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm laying in bed and I, I hear my, I had a vision of my father coming to me saying, Carolyn, what in the heck are you doing in that bed? And I, I'm looking around thinking I've just lost my mind. And I'm going like, Do, is anybody hearing and seeing what I see? Yeah. And my father said, Carolyn, get up out of that bed and you take care of yourself mm -hmm. like you took care of me. And Michelle, that moment, I packed my stuff up, the doctors and everybody thought I had lost my mind and maybe I did lose my mind. Maybe you did. I instantly became an advocate. Wow. That gave me hope. I said, this can't ever happen to anyone else again. And then I started doing research. And then I met this woman by the name of Michelle Pope that was literally standing in a pulpit at the, at, uh, in, um, at Sacramento. Sacramento. <laughs> literally talking about the, you know, the effects of caregiving and protecting the seniors. And I, the more I heard her talk, I was going like this. Oh my God, there's <laughs> someone that, that gets it. That she gets it. And then Michelle, yeah. I mean, I watched you like a hawk. Wow. I mean, you went to your, <laughs> you went back to your seat and then you picked up all your belongings. And I went, oh no, this lady's not getting away that easy because there were still other testimonies. Yeah. I literally left everything, my purse, you name it. And I, I'm running after you. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I ran after you because Michelle, and I'm saying, sharing this story for a reason. People, you got to find some hope and you may hear hope through somebody else's pain. You may hear hope by somebody telling you this is another way to, to help you. Michelle, you helped me. You gave me that hope by listening to you because I thought, surely nobody is going to ever believe what I went through. Yes. I thought I was the only person on planet Earth. Yeah. And then I ended up seeking professional help. This is after I talked to Michelle and asked her, Michelle, I'm, and you know, Miss Polkin, I'm Kellen A. Brink. I know you don't know me. And she, you're just running, going, okay, I'm going to the ladies' room. I'm like, come in, in here. <laughs> and I'm tr still trucking behind you, thinking, I don't care if the lady thinks I'm insane. I got to know her name. And Michelle, you were so kind. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. You were so yeah. kind to me because my heart was shattered. 
yeah. and I didn't know what to do. So people out there, I don't care who you are, if you've experienced or traumatized by anything that's, that you felt feel like you've lost your hope, seek help. Yeah. Know that you're not by yourself. Someone has experienced what you've experienced. Somebody has. Mm -hmm. And Michelle, you uh, made me a, a board member, or, or maybe I asked you, can I sit on your board? No, no, I, mean, I asked you. Because <laughs> oh, I, I know I was pretty aggressive with you. And, but Michelle, I mean, here it is 12 years later. I don't know how many years. Yeah, later. 12 years. 12 we years. are still just as close to day as day one. Yeah. I know I could call you up and say, Michelle, someone stole my ID. And Michelle, okay, Colin, what do you need from me? What can I do to help you? And I want you to I talk about that because friends, if you don't mind, this is a true story. So uh, this, you're, we're taking you on our journey. Carolyn and I talk a lot in, on my ride home. So there are people like my, my auntie, I try to talk to her on my way to the office in the morning. And then Carolyn, I, I go home with her a lot. And um, there's just enough time for us to have a good in-depth conversation. And this particular day, for some reason, I felt her running across my heart. You know, and I, I say that a lot when, when people come up for me and I've now learned that's the time you pick up the phone and call them. That's the time you text them. That's the time you reach out. And I called her and I said, sis, what's going on? How are you? And she told me this story. I said, Michelle, you're not gonna believe this. There's a person that has stolen not only my good name, but she's stolen all of my books and put it on, on Google and made it her books. She stole my picture of Carolyn A. Brett and put it on her Google page. So people were thinking Carolyn A. Brett was me, but, but it wasn't. And then she was redirecting anyone that would Google Carolyn A. Brett that would go to her page because she had created a, a website, a Carolyn A. Brett website. And when I saw that, I'm going, how could this be? And I knew the, I knew the person. That's the part that really is crazy. Yeah. I knew yeah. her from the pharmaceutical industry. We're not even the same nationality, but she took it upon herself to steal my identity. And then once we, the system deceased, this has been going on, folks. I found out the first time in 2016, that's when yeah, it contacted me and said, you are uh, not in compliant with your caregiver story. You're, you have an employee that you didn't properly, I'm going employee. I don't have employees. Everybody in my nonprofit is a volunteer. I'm a volunteer. I never make one quarter, one dime, one nickel with caregiver story. And I then I, I, I sent a, a letter, an email, and emailed everybody, said, sis and deceased, and she did, she shut down the company here in Florida, although she's never lived in Florida. She shut that business down. So for two solid years from 2016 to 2018, I never heard, I thought it was all over. Until 2019, I'm getting more letters and I'm seeing Carolyn Abrid every place. And she took my trademark and changed that and put her, my, uh, my name, Carolyn Abrid, with her company name on it. So um, um, I ended up contacting, of course, every institution on planet Earth because I'm an advocate. Advocates, folks, don't mess with the advocate. They're crazy. They will continue to fight and they don't know how to stop. They don't know how to stop. So when I did everything that I learned to, in, in regards to becoming the book writer with my work in over 1,125 libraries worldwide, I took that methodology and I poured it into, I'm going after this lady and nothing's going to stop me, but I'm going to do it legally. So yeah. I spoke with an IRS a retired um, criminal investigator. He became my POA and he said, we've got to shut down Caregiver Story Inc. And I'm going, I got to shut my company down. He said, uh, Carolyn, thieves never stop. You got to stop them. I, I'm a, he said, I'm a criminal investigator, have been for 22 years. They don't stop. So you shut it down 
and that will be a trap. She's gonna fall in that trap because she's gonna still use your EIN number. And I'm thinking, no, she because she said she stopped. No, but I shut my company down. And guess what, Michelle? She used my EIN number up till last year, but my company was shut down at 2019. Right I, so, so, so I'm going, okay, dear God, why are you giving me this assignment? Because I'm dealing with cuckoo crazy right now. Yeah. <clears throat> because God wants me to share with folks. I'm not the only one that's had their, their identity stolen and stripped away. And there is a process. Yeah. So because I'm an advocate, I contacted Google. And I, but you, with Google, everyone, I want you to know if you, if you're going to trademark your name, it must be attached with a business. So my, the name of my company is called Carolyn A. Brent Deep Beauty Health and Wellness University. I got that trademark. She stole my name, Carolyn A. Brent, and put what her, her company with it. And then Google ended up taking my information because I had an EIN number, excuse okay. me, a trademark number that was registered. They sent it to this company called womandatabase.org. They're housed at, uh, at um, Howard University, and they get 20,000 infringement complaints per day. So guess what? I had to wait my turn for a year, and they did all of their investigations and, and found I, she stole my ID, and then Google tore all of the stuff that she had in French for years. My name, all of my daddy's pick. Now, don't mess with my daddy. Sorry, you crossed the line. You're messing with my daddy. So she and, was claiming him. Yes. As her, yeah. Yeah. She was claiming my father and then putting her one book that she wrote so she could sell, sell the book, sell it. I mean, she was, and then she was charging people five to six thousand dollars as a speaker sharing with them that oh i trained carolyn a brent i'm her trainer i don't that's why i said i don't do coaches i don't believe in that and that's what she turned herself into a coach just robbing people literally robbing people and then and using your yeah. using your logo using your um sure. the work that you your research your stuff all of my books, every yeah. last one, she took off. But this is the clincher. I didn't realize one of my, pub I mean, this is how, how deep this goes. One of my publishing companies reported her to Google and there's a different process. Uh, the Caregiver Companion, she stole this book. So oh. what, what they did, uh, uh, Google reports to a company for, for only for publishers and you know artists and creative yeah. folks. Uh, to a company called Linkbusters, and Linkbusters pull infringements down. So had I not gone through identity theft, Michelle, I wouldn't know to tell people what to do to protect their identities. So she took this book that normally retails for, I guess, maybe $10 or something. Yeah, something like that. into a PDF and was selling it for, I guess, 99 cents. And my, of course, you don't mess with uh, publishing companies' profits, they, yeah. they went after her. I never knew she did that, but that's what she stole. So now we're in court three years later. We're in court because she told the judge, the first judge when we first, when I first sued her, that we were business partners. I gave her verbal permission to use my name. And the, and, and the second judge, because we went, we're on our third judge now. The second judge was a more uh, seasoned, mature judge. The first judge is a vetting judge uh, that vets to make sure you have, you know, a case. A legitimate case, yeah. And Michelle, I put together, I pretend like I was writing a book for Harlequin, 192 pages worth of evidence, and I put it in book form because I said, nobody's going to throw this out. They're going to, somebody's going to either think I'm insane and crazy, yeah. but I, I submitted all that. So it, the, the first judge said, oh, my God, I've never seen anything so organized like this. But he let it through. The second judge said, uh, reprimanded me and said, you, you need to get an attorney. This is way too much stuff to, to, to look at or look for. And then she, the judge said this. He said, ladies, we could solve this right now. And he told the, the defendant, offer Miss Brent a dollar because she says it's not about a dollar she wants you to stop but offer her a dollar quit using her name quit using her ID and we could all go home Michelle she refused 
Oh my God. She refused. <laughs> well, she's making too much money on your on your reputation. She's not willing to give that up. Oh. That yeah. must be it. I can't think of any other reason that a person wouldn't try to get out of a yeah. fraud uh, conviction. Well, Michelle, that was the second time I was traumatized because she continued to do it. And I had to go through 30 different uh, routes as far as the attorneys generals in both states, California here, to, uh, you, poli I felt uh, four police reports in two different uh, parts of Florida because of being harassed. I had to move to an undeclosed uh, location, which I did this year because my address was online. So I, I wanna share with folks, try to make sure that your address is not online because if you have a stalker or somebody like in my case out to get you they will harass you and the stuff that's going on in the world today oh my goodness yeah you don't want to take a chance like that yeah. so now we're getting ready to go to trial and google and lehman and link busters all put together their findings and said infringement in other words everything i accused her of it's true. true. So now she's backed in a corner because now we're going to trial. And in Florida, when you go to trial and you are uh, found guilty, it's not a pretty picture because this is mail fraud, interstate fraud, identity theft. Say, so it's federal. <sighs> it's a federal, yeah. It's, it's the, the list goes on and on and on and on. But I'm an advocate. And I stopped her. So now I'm writing a book with several other really talented uh, writers and they're helping me to really share this story because there's no books on the market. When I spoke with my, oh, and by the way, by the way, folks, when you do what's right, God blesses you. My attorney that I bless his heart, he pro bono, no, no, pro bono. Thank and you, this is what attorney. <laughs> yes, yes. And this is what he told me. Carolyn, I know that she's, you know, a, a nut, but all the time her attorney prepares to go to court is costing her at least three thousand dollars because she because you know she gotta pay a, an attorney's not gonna take a losing case unless they you pay them money. So the money that she stole from me, now she's paying an attorney. And the attorney really should have tried to stop her because now her bills are just mounting. They're, they're mounting. So I share with folks where there is healing. There is healing. There will be hope. Mm -hmm. If I would have given up with, when my daddy was snatched away, I would never have met Michelle that helped me by my hand and told me it's going to be all right, that taught me about the judicial system and the elder care and you know being an advocate what it means, because Michelle, you have your hands in the trenches of it. Just no, you know, for a long time. time. Yeah. Protecting and, yeah. Food for the elder. Now, come on, Michelle. Aren't we both considered elders? We're both 65. I'm an elder now. I'm an elder now. Yes, I am. You know, and I'm loving it, you know. And, and I want to also say, though, Carolyn, that it also took, um, you know, hope and healing actually equal or, uh, or have a, a part of the formula. Let's think of this as a recipe yeah, to, yeah. to get to hope and healing and all that. You also have to have the courage yeah. to overcome your des desire to be revengeful, to uh, your desire to, because when somebody steals your identity and 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 your and your potential income because it was potential income i mean not that you do it for the money but the reality is we are blessed when we're living out our purpose we get abundant stuff comes to us not always monetary but abundance absolutely and so she it was interrupting that yes. blessing but on the the worst side of it is is that she was also taking something ripping something from you that was very important and a part of your healing, which was when you did the story about your dad. Cause I, you know, I've read that book numerous times and, and, and it was like, 
how could you steal something that's so intimate that yeah. you 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 didn't even know this man and uh -huh. and and now you're going on stage and acting as if this individual is someone who you love and who you're grieving i mean that must have been that must have felt like an anvil oh, was yeah. dropped i but can't imagine let me share this with you this is a fair you guys write this down this is kind yeah. of <laughs> when she stole my daddy his his name his picture and started telling the pelican story that was november 25th, 2019, I found a website and I, it's called complaint. It's a, it's where it's a national website. The only, the only website that you can put file a legitimate complaint on, and you're not going to get sued if it's true, if your complaint is legitimate. So I was bold enough to put my name, Carolyn A. Brent, and I put everything that I sent to uh, the state of California, to the IRS, to the police department, I'm talking about the laundry list. I cut and paste that eight page letter and I put it on the complaint board. <laughs> and and I only thing I gotta say, she can't shut it down. She could sue me if she wants, but truth is my defense. All of it's true. And then here recently, I'm having fun now. This is the fun part. <laughs> When I got the information from Google, I uploaded it, sp sp splashed it on there because they said it's the uh, put it Digital Millennial Copyright Act. She violated that. I put that up. When I got the information from Lumen, I uploaded it, put it up there. And, and then when I got the one from Google, that Google is the, the cat's me out. Yeah. They said, that they had taken down uh, the complaint because it was infringement. That's a key word. I learned from my attorney, it's all about the words. So look up what if infringement was, that's stealing. It's, I mean, just look it up, it's not, infringement doesn't have a pretty picture. A pretty definition to it. <laughs> do it, do it, you, you, do it on this morning. So I know he's like, yeah, I know what that means. <laughs> So beautiful when when there's there when you're the devastation that I've dealt with, I never lost my hope when I found my way. So I, I share with folks, that's why I wanted to share with how you helped me with hope. And also Stuart helped me with hope. We were on an AARP uh, um, a AARP podcast uh, in 2016. We were okay. on that. And that's when I met Stuart. That was the first elder law attorney I ever met. I'm going, okay, there's people to help with elder law. So with his book, uh, the name of his book is called what? Um, elder Care Ready. Elder Care Ready. I have, he sent me the book, he sent me the workbook, and I gotta tell you, it helped me to be ready. So here I am, I'm 65, you're 65. Stuart's older than both of us. He turned 65. January 1st, I think. I think so, yeah. <laughs> then I'm like five days behind Stuart. And then, of course, Michelle is the toddler senior. She oh, just the toddler of the senior. Yeah. You know, I, I guess in, uh, on the 11th of May. Welcome. And then we have Jane. Jane, uh, you know, Stuart's wife. And she's oh. with us too in the, in the uh, club of 65. <laughs> I, I got to tell you. I love day 65. I still go on stage with bodybuilding, not to perform. I pass out trophies to, you know, help with, to help other, you know, people my age and over say you got to take care of yourself. And you know, Michelle, my tagline is caregiving and the practicing of self-care must go hand in hand. Well, so, they have to. Yes, and, and I do have to say one, this is a praise report for something ugly turning beautiful. When I had to shut down the caregiver story, I created uh, my, my team. It, it wasn't just me, but it was you know, maybe about 10 of it, 10 of us, the Carolyn, excuse me, let me correct myself. I was gonna say. Dr. Uh, Carolyn A. Brent, health and uh, deep beauty, health 
and Wellness University. And what I mean by deep beauty, I'm not talking about just the exterior. That yeah. resonates from what's going on on the inside. Yeah. But I share with people, check out the ocean. Why do people just sit in front of the ocean and they just stare? They're looking at that deep beauty. Yep. So yep. I share with people, handle your business medically, financially, emotionally, leg legally, physically, and above all, spiritually. And that will turn that healing through hope, which hope is faith, the substance, substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things that are seen. So yeah. I am the evidence that you don't have to let a horrible situation rob you from your deep beauty, That's your joy, true. your finance. I haven't worked a quote unquote regular job in 12 years or 13 years, maybe 40. I don't, it's, a little I, it's been so long ago, I don't remember. But see, what my, and I was earning a high six figure income when I worked in the pharmaceutical industry, but I almost lost hope because my family wanted, it, they thought dad had money, I had money. That's what happened. In care right? of my, our father. I paid $6,500 a month out of pocket, private, this is private care. She thought that was on welfare and the state of California was paying for his assistant living. Now, Michelle, we know, come on. That's assistant living now, I mean, that's, that's actually, when you think about it, that's a while back. So now people uh, are paying, particularly with dementia care or levels of higher, you know, uh, uh, comorbid uh, other diseases, it's like 10,000 a month. Oh, and, yeah. and the thing is, we have the science. This is where the, the methodology of aging, you and I and, and Stuart and all of us that are in the methodology, methodology of aging must change in America. Because yeah. one, now we, we've been talking, you and I, and, and that very moment when we met, we were already using the terminology, the gray tsunami, the, the eldering, the, the graying of America. Here we are now over to, that's 12 years ago. Yeah, we're here. Okay. Yeah. But we still don't have what we were fighting for even then. You got it. And, and that to me means either we don't care as, as individuals and, and, um, and I know that's not true, but we don't care enough to ensure that everything that we do for a human being, just because it's born, so we start from the womb to the tomb, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we think about how much money would it cost to get that person from the womb to the tomb, healthcare, education, and everything, and really start looking at the total person. Right. Because I think that um, the current, <clears throat> excuse me, the current stuff that's happening right now, Carolyn, you and I talked about this, the elephant in the room is that these are 18, 19, 17, 18, 19 year old going out, the young man that went into the church and killed the people with the Bible study. These are young adults yeah. that um, are doing this before their brain, which we now neurologically know that you have to be between 23 and 25 before your brain is actually formed completely. But they're going out and killing people. So what are we doing as a society that is nurturing? They just went, uh, a young man here in Berkeley, they, they, they throttled his uh, attempt, but they went in his house. He had guns, all kinds of things. And he was going to go up to UC, uh, up to uh, Berkeley High and shoot up the school. What is going on in a world where we, I wasn't thinking about shooting up no school when I was 18 years old. I was thinking about boys. Right, right. Me too, me too sister. <laughs> you know, and trying to figure out what that was all about, okay? <laughs> and going to dances. Yeah. Yes, and I grew up. There was there were some trials and tribulations in growing up as a black woman in the time that I did. So I felt pain. I've told you all before. I I thought about suicide at a time in my life when I didn't love myself. I never went through with it, but I thought about it like, oh, maybe my, yeah, whatever. 
But at the end of the day, we're not we're, we're talking about guns, but we're also not talking about how as as a world we're nurturing this crap. Yeah, yeah. We're nurturing this crap. You know, Carolyn, you and I don't watch television, right? Thank God. So, yes. I, 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 and people will say things to me like, did you see that show and, 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 and scooby dooby doo and they were doing this? I'm like, on television? <laughs> see, Michelle, that's the, that is where the challenge comes in. People view mindless stuff and they make that their world. I'd rather read a good book or write a good book or call, contact somebody that I truly respect and ask them, can you show me how? I'm the, I'm the number one person that will call, can you show me how to do X, Y, and Z? Yes. Can you show me how? And guess what? The people that I respect and I call and ask them, show me how, they show me. They're more than happy to. There are other advocates, but Michelle, there's other ways, you're right. What we've been fighting for in legislation, it didn't come to fruition. But I'm going to share this with you. When I was writing my last book uh, that I published, Amazing Grace. Oh, this yeah. Is what I Great said. book, by the way. Great book. Thank you. Thank you. I said uh, publicly the, the senators, the congresspeople, the, the legislation, they let me down. But God had a greater calling for what I needed to do. Yes. The, I have eight publishing companies that publish my work worldwide. So I was thinking too small at yeah. first by going, I got to do this in California, California, California. I don't even live in California. Right. I love California, but I don't live there. God had a greater calling because now my work is worldwide for those who want to read it. It's and, free. And in languages, my friends, it's yes. translated as well. They could go to a library, check it out, it won't cost them a dime. But yeah. knowledge, for the lack of knowledge, the Bible says this, for the lack or the rejection of knowledge, my people perish. So that's why people are perishing. They don't want to get the knowledge. And healing, Michelle, isn't it work to heal? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's, it, Carolyn, mm, I'm fighting back the tears now. I, you know, I'm a wuss, right? But when you really, truly, truly, truly forgive yourself first yeah. and then forgive everybody in the snapshot of pain of your life. You may have to even go back and dig and dig and dig in the subconscious to forgive. Yeah. And once you do that, there is a sense of divine freedom. Yes. And that, that, that will help you to, to heal. Also, the other thing is gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. Yeah, yeah. I have a, 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 a auntie, cousin, 66 years old, gone. Mm -hmm. Just, I just did a video to celebrate that birthday. So why am I here? I ask myself that every, every morning when I, when I read about those uh, or heard about the children on read, cause I read, still read the paper guys uh, uh, online, but I still read the paper. And I read about those little children and I thought, why am I still here? Yeah, yeah. When they are gone. Yes. And what, I have to be grateful and live my life. Right. Taking this, taking the understanding that the spirit of those children needs to be manifested through my purpose. Yes. I have to live out a better life because their life was taken. Oh yeah, yes. Right? I mean, the connection of, I am my brother's keeper. I am my, I am my, I feel for you. What, what's how that song goes? Um, I feel for you, you feel for me. We are still a part of the same family. Yes. You know, we come up with so much Mm, I almost said that word, BS, <laughs> BS say, slogans yes. <laughs> that we run around and put on caps and t-shirts and people make money off of it. Yeah. But 
what are we doing to change the hearts and minds and souls of each other? The Southern Baptist Church was raping children. And then on Sunday, opening up their churches and talking about God. I know. I'm speechless. Yeah. I'm speechless when I hear these kinds of things. And that's why when people say to me, why do you do the podcast or blog or whatever the heck this thing is called? Why do you do your public speaking and try to go into neighborhoods where you know you, you, there's nobody like you? Right. Where do, why do you, why do you, uh, Michelle, why do you put so much on your plate? It's because of this. Thank you, Kathy Kamai. Being the change. That's what the, this means. Be the change. Be the change. Being the change means not sitting back in judgment going pointing finger at every Tom, Dick, and Harry. It is doing it your darn self. I almost swore again. Sorry. <laughs> Do it yourself. Or get a group of people like Carolyn and I got, we get, we do, and we're always planning something. And one day, one of our plans is going to come to fruition. We're not disappointed that we didn't do something just because we planned it. We know it's the building block for the next and the better thing. Yes. Amen. Stop judging yourself on other people's success. Yeah. I don't need to look, you don't need to look, Carolyn, like anybody else. Yeah. And neither do the folks that are listening and hearing this, this vlog, blog, whatever, conversation this morning. You don't have to be like anybody else. Stop letting the world convince you. I just watched a documentary, Carolyn. You'll love this one, Beauty and Healing, where the beauty business is one of the largest beauty and health, mind, body, spirit stuff, largest self-help industry out of all, yeah. $42.1 billion with the possibility of it going doubling to 81.2, or that's doubling, $2 billion in the next year. Wow. But when I drove to work this morning and went by People's Park in Berkeley, there were homeless people sleeping on the streets in tents. But yet, we nurture an industry that I found out in this documentary that is actually doing us more harm than good. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because when you talk about mind, body, spirit, healing in your university, you're not just talking about, um, because everybody can't have a body like Carolyn Brent. No, you can't. She's been a bodybuilder. She, 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 she focuses on that for, all, when you read her book, Amazing Grace, you'll know why she focuses because she has back problems just like I do. You can't have a body like Michelle. None of us can have bodies like each other unless we go and pay for it and cut ourselves to look like the picture that we take in. Yeah. Yeah. But loving who you are That's and being your best healthy self, your best clean skin not it don't have to be flawless yeah, yeah. just clean <laughs> shit you know what are we doing to people i know i know and and this is where the truth or the rubber meets the road beauty comes from within there could be a 80 a 90 or a 100 year old wrinkled woman and have the most beautiful spirit that reeks out of their soul. And you just want to hug that person and go, oh my God, I just, I just love you. Because and I have deep, and yes. Deep and beauty. they are beautiful, right? They are beautiful. Deep, deep beauty. And one thing about it that I've learned as I grow older, and I, I break, I you know what? I embrace every year that God has provided me on this planet 65 so people say Carol why do you talk about your age I said why not I'm thankful to be alive my mother died at 63 I made it two years older than, than my mother and then I also look at the standpoint when you do the mission whatever that mission is the commission whatever that commission is in my case is good health 
because when I first start writing about death and dying, all the publishing companies out there, because I wrote the first book, Why Wait? This book right here, Why Wait? Because right. there's no books on the market about adult sibling rivalry. So right. I wrote the first one. And I had to do a self-publish. They said, oh, nobody's going to buy the book because it's not sexy and it's not pretty subject. Nobody's going to want it. I said, oh, no problem. I'm just going to take my pretty self, write the, the book, and let people know that caregiving and self-care must yeah. go hand in hand. So now they got the message 14 years later. But they got it. And because I refuse to be counterfeit, I take care of my mind, body, soul, and spirit. Because I want people to know that what you see is what you get, is Carolyn A. Brett to the core. And that person, that negative, stinking, thinking lady that stole my name, you can't have it. That's my name. And it will be on my tombstone or it's going to go down in history after I'm gone. You can't have it. And that's why we're going, we are in court and we're going to trial so that you could try to convince the judge that that's her name. I mean, this is a really good movie. In the it's name. a great, I told you, I told you a couple of weeks ago, Lifetime is waiting for the script. Oh yeah. And I want to be in it. I don't know. I, I even, I want to, I want an Alfred Hitchcock moment. <laughs> Where Absolutely. I go in and out. Oh, Carolyn. You know well, what? Coming. <laughs> What's so beautiful, we're able to laugh because of the pain. We could laugh. There's hope. There is hope. We're yeah. laughing, Michelle. And my stories are not. Are they pretty stories? Nobody would want. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Identity theft. And, and seniors out there, when you see these call, phone calls, don't answer the phone. Yeah. When you get these messages saying, oh, I get messages and I know who it is. It's, it's the person that wants my name. Oh, Carolyn, XYZ person told me to contact you. Uh, the only thing you have to do is sign here on the dot and we could do it for free. Now, why do they want my signature? Hmm. Okay, it's like, and I've also heard by professionals, and I'm talking about, you know, criminal investigators, mm -hmm. a thief, their pat, look for their pattern. Their pattern yeah. doesn't change. Yeah. So I, I figure out this person's pattern, it's never changed. So I, when I see her coming, I just do block, delete, block, well, snapshot, block, delete. I do a snapshot. Yeah, so save everything. Yeah, anyone, you could call me, call me up if you need some help but for me to guide you through the, you know, where you need to go. Carolyn A. Brent, Google me, I'm, everything about me is up there, call Michelle. Michelle, I love you. And Well, I think this, this has been, as always, Carolyn, um, we, we, every time we talk, we, uh, or speak, we talk about something, a topic, and then I always feel so motivated. And I love the negative stinking thinking. That that that's like one of my favorite things. I had to that's write in all my books too. So I, I know, I know, I know. I always every time you say it, I remember that it's in your book. <laughs> um, but Amazing Grace is a wonderful book. The the book of uh, the Caregiver's Companion is an excellent book. And then the most recent book, tell me the name of it again, I'm sorry. A Transforming Your Life Through Self-Care, A Guide to Tapping Into Your Deep Beauty. There you go. Oh. And I love that book. That book uh, I got, I think this time last year or March of last year uh, when it first came out. And I began to read it along with a bunch of other holistic stuff. And as all of you know, I've been on a path of um, self-healing and mental healing and all of these kinds of things. And, and I found Carolyn's book uh, more suited to my way of thinking because she brought in not just you know food and exercise, but she brought in the spirit. And for me, as I've always told you here at Life is a Sacred Journey, I follow a God that I believe in. I'm never to impose it upon you, um, uh, but to let you know that that also is very much a part of my um, uh, miracle grow, that without that, re that divine relationship, I, I know I would cease to exist from inside. So I, I don't say that to you to say that's what you need to have in your life. I just say it might be a way. It might be something. 
that you can embrace in a way that will help you to think bigger than just who you are in the context of this, this, uh, this journey, this life journey, because it can be hard. I haven't had a period in my, I don't think there's any period in my life that I can remember that hasn't had its own difficulties. As a child, it was bullying, right? Or somebody said they didn't like your hair or they wanted to eat your lunch or, so we don't, we, every phase of our journey, we are, um, we are tested. And um, resiliency, Carolyn, is what I think of when I think of you, uh, wi wisdom is what I think of when I think of you. And so Dr. Carolyn Brent, you are an amazing woman. I wanna thank you for sharing your story. You know, folks, we all have stories. This is one thing that Carolyn and I um, talk about all the time. And, and Nancy Redding, who, who shows up here. The strongest person that you see needs you more than you think because they carry burdens that they do not share. They need a hug. They need a text that says, I'm thinking about you. And it doesn't mean woe is me. I'm not saying that, but don't think because a person always says they're okay, that they truly are because it's not true. It's true. So 1-800-273-8255 is a suicide hotline number for you out there who are feeling like this is the end, today is the day, um, <clears throat> excuse me, pick up a phone. I would say to you, go to phone booths, but we don't even have those anymore. Uh, but you know, walk into a store, I don't know, there'll be a good Samaritan somewhere. And you just say, I need help. I need to, uh, somebody please call the suicide hotline for me. Somebody will help you. Yeah, there'll be some of us that, that will look at you like you're nuts. And, and not want to help because unfortunately, that's the world we live in right now. We're afraid to help because we're afraid of losing something, i.e. our lives, because they fear is a big part of how we live. Right. But 1-800-273-8255, those people are not afraid. Those people will have courage to walk with you in this dark moment where you feel that your life doesn't matter. Carolyn, you know how important uh, somebody hanging on. Yeah. Amen. Hanging on to that next moment, you know, because it will get better. Carolyn Amen. and I are testimony to that. We've both been on our knees, folks. We've both had our faces to the ground crying out to an unseen, what some people say to me, how can you believe in an unseen thing? Okay, well, anyway, crying out to that. Yeah. And we are a testimony to those cries and we are a testimony to what Carolyn just talked about, which is the laughter and the connection. So Carolyn, your last words to your friends at Life is a Sacred Journey because they all love you so much. I just wanna say, everyone discover your deep beauty, your own deep beauty. We were all born for a reason and a purpose to, to leave our, our mark on this planet. What's your mark? Your mark is different than my mark, Michelle's mark. What's your mark? And then people, I do have to say this really quick. They keep Listen. saying, I'm trying to find my purpose. You don't have to find your purpose. Your purpose will pull at you and say, come back here. I never wanted to be an el elder care legislation advocate. Are you kidding me? But guess what? That was my calling. That was my purpose. And I will be that until God calls me home. I'm a fighter and I'm an advocate. Don't mess with me. <laughs> and she'll be up there doing the same thing, saying, okay, you all over here and you over here. <laughs> Everybody have a wonderful weekend. I am getting ready to go to the Central Valley in Nancy Redding. I'll see you in a couple of hours um, and spending some time with some women uh, to, and we're going to have a spiritual retreat until Sunday. And so I'm looking forward to that. And um, I'm going to hug a whole lot of trees because it's going to be in a tree environment, but go out and hug a tree. Carolyn talked about the ocean. She uses the ocean as her calm and solstice space. Find an ocean, tide, uh, tide pools, go look at the tide pools, but do this more than anything else. 
Stop crashing into your spirit and creating harm for yourself and stop crashing into other people. Be kinder than you think you need to be in every situation and let the judgment that starts here not reach here. Because if it reaches here, then it reaches here. And then it, it takes a whole lot of healing when we use judgment as the foundation that we, we, we walk upon. All right, my friends, go pet a dog, pet a cat, smile at somebody, hug somebody, say, hey, how you doing neighbor? You know what, even go so far, have the coverage to say, I love you to a stranger. It'll change you forever, I promise you. Find a stranger every day that you say, I love you. Just let it roll off your lips and then just keep walking. You ain't got to do nothing. And if they think you're crazy, so what? Who cares? <laughs> but you'll feel better as yeah. you walk away from that moment of compassion and love. Yeah. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care of your soul. Take care of your hearts. Thank you, Carolyn. Hold on. And I will say goodbye to you offline. But goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Have a great weekend. We love you. I love you. Carolyn loves you. Me too. You. There you go. All right. Feel love and take that into the world. Peace.